Hello YouTubers of Ask a Prepper here. Ladies and gentlemen, I often get questions about backup heaters. So I wanted to share with you the heater that I had installed in the bunker. And what it is, is a non-electric heater that runs off of propane. It requires zero electricity. And I think it's doing a great job so far. Even though it's not that cold and we'll find out here as the months go by and it gets colder how good of a job it does. But this heater that I had installed has actually kept my bunker at a pretty decent temperature just with the pilot going on. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what the heater is, how much I paid for it, how it works, and I'm going to show you how the propane tanks are set up outside. That way, if you're looking for an off-grid heater that allows you to warm your home or whatever space you intended on warming it without electricity, I think this is a great option. I purchased this heater off of Amazon and at first I was somewhat reluctant on getting it because the reviews were kind of mixed. There were a lot of reviews that were really good that said this thing is awesome and there were some reviews that were bad that said this thing is junk. It doesn't even work right out of the box. So I was pretty reluctant in getting it but I went ahead and took a look at the overall reviews and I decided to get it. It's a very good price. I paid 400, I believe $469 for it, right? So this is an Ashley direct vent propane heater and we'll get into what it means that it's direct vent. However, I purchased the larger one because it was only about 50 or $60 more than the smaller size. This one here is 17,000 BTU. And ladies and gentlemen, just so that you know how to convert BTUs as far as usage, into how much BTU a gallon of propane has. One gallon of propane has approximately 90,000 or so BTU. I think it's like 91 or 92,000. So this being a 17,000 BTU heater means that if it's running on high, it will use 17,000 BTU per hour, which means that if this is running on high, it'll take it roughly five, five and a half hours or so before it uses one gallon of propane. And then you can do the math as far as how many times a day it actually turns on because it does have a thermostat that allows you to set a temperature range that you want it to be on. So that way you can figure out how many gallons of propane you may need. I figured that I would probably go through about 100, 110 or so gallons of propane through the winter uh, with this heater. The smaller one that they have on Amazon is, I believe, 11,000 BTU. But like I said, I purchased this one because it was only $50 or $60 more for this bigger size. Now, the way that this works is very simple. I'm going to go ahead and go outside and show you all the setup that I have with the propane tanks. That way you can see what it looks like outside and you can see what the vent looks like outside as well. But this is very, very simple. It's 100% mechanical. No electricity needed whatsoever. So as you can see, the way that you ignite it is actually with a little piezo igniter. And I actually purchased an extra one just to make sure that if for some reason this one goes bad, I can just replace it very easily. And then it's got your settings here. It's got your off, your pilot, which is where it's on, ladies and gentlemen. I've kept, after we burned it in, once it got installed, we burned it in for a few hours. I had it on high and it was running really hot for a few hours to make sure that all of those gases got out of the system and we didn't smell anything inside uh, but other than that I've kept it on pilot keeping it on one is just too much it just makes it too hot in here so it got up to like 69 degrees here on one but just leaving it on pilot even with the nights being 36 37 degrees here right now it still stays around 60 62 degrees inside the bunker uh, I think that part of that is because I did not go cheap on insulation, but nonetheless, I think it's doing a great job at keeping this place warm just on pilot, right? So it, it turns on just like anything else. You put it on pilot, once it's on pilot, and let me show you the pilot real quick so you can see the size of the flame that it's throwing out. And that down there, I'm not sure if you can see that, that's the pilot right there. So as you can see, it's got two directions where the flame is going. One of them, I believe is called the thermocouple, and then the other one is going right to the burner. You can just turn it off if you like as well, but I leave it on pilot so that if there's any moisture in the air, it won't harm any of the 
parts inside of it. So, like I said, this is a very good way to heat your home or a space that requires zero electricity. Not very expensive. I did have it professionally installed because I wanted someone to do it that does this all the time instead of me taking a full day to do it. The person that installed it took him a couple of hours. He did it right. He's insured and all that kind of stuff, right? So I feel a lot better knowing that someone did it, that that's what they do for a living. So let's go ahead and go outside and let me show you how I have my propane tanks set up. And let me show you the direct vent. So this here is the vent that goes through the wall and comes all the way outside. And what makes this a direct vent, I'm not sure if you can see it because I painted it black. It used to be like a beige color, but I'm not sure if you can see it. But there is a small pipe right there that is about the same uh, radius or diameter as this. And then it's inside of a bigger pipe, as you can see down there. That bigger pipe that's around the small pipe is used to bring in cold air or to bring in fresh air which allows the burner to burn the fuel without using any air from inside of the bunker. And then, of course, the small pipe that you see here, that pipe is the exhaust pipe that allows the exhaust to come up and just go straight up. And it works very well at keeping any fumes or anything like that from inside the bunker. That is what makes this a direct vent. I know that I've stated in the past that you can use heaters like the Mr. Buddy or the Big Buddy heaters to heat a small space inside. That is, in my opinion, for emergencies and something that you have to do very carefully. For example, the Big Buddy, I believe they state in their user manual that if you're going to use that for a prolonged time indoors, that you have to have a window open uh, to a total of, I believe, like nine square inches. So you would have to open like an, a window, like a half an inch to make sure that fresh air is getting in. And the other thing with using propane without a direct vent is that it does make condensation inside of your dwelling or inside of the room that you're heating. So having a direct vent is really a great option. Now, the setup for the propane, very, very easy. I don't have it 100% set up yet because I had to order a part that was on back order. But this right here is where the propane goes in and it makes it very easy to attach it and make sure that this hose is not going through the wall. This is actually a pipe right here that goes all the way through the wall to the other side that's connected to a shutoff valve. And then that makes sure that you are not putting a hose through the wall where if something shifts, the hose won't get crimped or cracked or you know get cut in half for whatever reason. So as you can see, the hose goes back here to my propane tanks. So I have my propane tanks pretty much secured to the back of my bunker. All I did was screw in, I don't think you can see it because they're black, but all I did was screw in some eye bolts into it and then I went ahead and secured them to the back of the, bump, to the, back of the bunker. Uh, same thing on this side. And I have two of them. So I'm hoping that these two propane tanks will get me halfway through the winter. But like I said, it's going to be a learning experience this winter to see exactly how much propane I go through heating the bunker. Now, as you can see, I only have one propane tank connected to my heater. And the reason for that is, is because I ordered what's called, I believe they're called a splitter. And it's like an automatic splitter. And what you do is, is it's a mechanism that you put in between both propane tanks. And then you are able to connect a pigtail from each propane tank into the splitter. And then you're able to connect this hose right here into the splitter as the outlet and what that splitter does is it's automatic as soon as it knows that one of the propane tanks is empty it automatically switches over to the full propane tank and then ladies and gentlemen this is a really cool thing about this is that once one of the propane tanks is empty and it switches over to the next propane tank the splitter changes colors to let you know that one of your propane tanks is empty. So yes, I'll have to come back here maybe once every two weeks or once every month or something like that to see if the splitter has changed colors. But then that allows me the flexibility of being able to exchange that empty propane tank with a full propane tank once I know that it's empty. So that's what I'm waiting on. I actually ordered a couple of them to have one as a backup. However, they're on back order for like a month. So I'll probably end up, end up doing that in the snow, <laughs> unfortunately. 
So that's it, ladies and gentlemen. I just wanted to show you that heater. Uh, very easy to install it yourself. However, like I said, I have so much into the bunker that I decided to go ahead and pay someone to do it. Now, what did it cost me to pay someone to install it? Well, that's going to differ in different parts of the country. I'm sure it's probably a little more expensive up here uh, because, you know, the uh, rate for skilled workers up here is a little bit higher than in other places. But I paid about the same amount for the person to install it than what it cost me to buy it. And that's not counting the extra things that I had to purchase. Like I had to pay for the hose. I had to pay for, for that um, uh, regulator right there and little things like that. So I would say that I paid about the same amount, maybe $100 more when you take into consideration the extra parts that I had to purchase to go ahead and have it installed. To me, that is a very good value for what I got, especially having the peace of mind knowing that someone did it, that that's all they do. In other words, they're experts at doing what they do. And to me, that was a good value. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so I hope that you got something out of this, especially those of you that uh, asked me about having backup heat in your homes in case of a grid down. This is what it's looking like. All of the trees are brown. And if they're not, they're very, very quickly turning brown. And uh, winter is coming, ladies and gentlemen. I had been predicting this year that winter was going to come early. And unfortunately, I think that I'm right. Having said that, thank you very much for joining in. I hope that you all have a great day. Happy Saturday to you. We will see you tomorrow on Sunday during our live stream. So hope to see you all there. Remember to be good to each other, ladies and gentlemen. When good people do good things, good things happen. Remember to take some time to smell the roses or to smell the browning leaves. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, remember to reach one, teach one, and repeat. If we all did this, the world would be a better place, and you know that it will be a better place. Many blessings to all of you and your families. I'm Alaska Prepper. I am out.